let me greet you in 2023 in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that this year will fulfill the purpose of God in your life. You will do very well. We have been talking about acceleration and we trust that this year, indeed, you will accelerate. And your, your acceleration will exceed that of 2022 if you ever accelerated in 2022. If you didn't accelerate, that will begin to accelerate. You remember that we are talking about the seven concluding instructions which we got from the JJCN Continental Conference, which we had. I was requested then to remind you of the things we talked about. There were seven instructions or seven uh, mandates we got from God. The first one was that acceleration is a mandate. It's not a theme. A mandate is a decree, is a directive, it's a dictate, it's an obligation. God is obligating us to, uh, to accelerate. God is mandating us to do so. So the Lord emphasized the fact that this mandate is not only to us, a theme given to us when we met as JGCN, but rather it is a mandate to the church of God, a, ma a mandate to disciples. That was the first uh, instruction that God gave us. This is a mandate. It was as though we had gathered there in person and that on the last day we were dispersing to go to our various places. But obviously we had met virtually. We had never left our places. But the picture I had, it was as though we were gathered in one place and we we're now dispersing to go to our respective places where we live. And God was saying, as you go home, go and accelerate and accelerate until Christ comes. That was the first mandate. The second mandate was that uh, we should make discipleship the core of our acceleration. There's a reason uh, for that. That discipleship is the instructional uh, manual, is the, is the instructional program, is a program of instruction for those who belong to the kingdom of God, the citizens of the kingdom of God uh, are trained through discipleship. It is a far making. Another reason is that we're given a mandate uh, to make disciples of all nations. In Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, and that is also alluded to in Mark 16 and verse 15. It's also found in John 20 verse 21. And it's found also in Luke at 24 verses 47 to 49. It's found even in, uh, in Acts chapter one verses six to eight. So it's, uh, we are given a commission, uh, a great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. It is in that area that we must particularly accelerate what we're saying that we should make discipleship the core of our, of our acceleration. Then number three, we're told that the time is short. And therefore, if we are to accelerate, it is now. Because we're living in the end, at the end of the end times. 
we are at the end of the end times. <clears throat> and this is the time for us to accelerate. God was saying, don't waste time in this season of acceleration. He referred to this as the season of acceleration because the time is short. That's where we ended. That was instruction number three. And today we want to look at instruction number four. Uh, the instruction number four is move on. Don't allow anything to, to detain you. You must move on. The, what God was saying was, it was that we have got a proclivity to, uh, to, 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 to want to be detained by something that we, we enjoy. And therefore, God says, no, don't allow anything to detain you. Don't allow anything to detain you. There's a scripture which we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let me look for that scripture because the Lord is impressing it on my heart. That nothing should detain us, nothing should delay us. Uh, nothing should make us to slow down. Nothing should slow us down. First Corinthians chapter seven. Uh, there Paul is talking, about, talking in the context of marriage. In the context of marriage. And then he says something very notable there. Let me find that. He says in verse 29, what I mean, brothers, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they had none. We could, by extrapolation, say that those who have got husbands should live as if they, they don't have any. They have none. In other words, your spouse should not cause you, should not slow you down. Your spouse should not decelerate you. Those who mourn as if they did not mourn. In other words, if there's something that perturbed you, something that is sorrowful, you must sorrow for a, a, a short while and move on and accelerate. Those are happy as if they were not. If there's something that exhilarates you, something that makes you happy, don't waste all your time celebrating your happiness as if there is no mandate that you've been given. And then it says, um, it says uh, as if they were not, and those who buy something, as if it were not theirs to keep. Okay, if you buy something, enjoy it for a little while and know that there's a job to be done and accelerate. God has blessed you with a new house. Celebrate it for a few days and then move on. For well, that house is a means to an end. It's not an end. God is giving you a place, a shelter from which you'll be operating. Don't idolize it. God gives you a car, it's a means of transportation from point A to point B. If God were to give you an aeroplane, uh, don't spend your time uh, celebrating your aeroplane. So if you buy something, uh, remember that there's, there's work to be done and therefore enjoy it for a little while and move on. Then it says, those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. That's a, a wonderful, a good word. You must not be engrossed in them. That's a good word. Because the problem is the problem of being engrossed uh, in the things that God gives you. And material and financial things can really cause you to be engrossed, uh, to be absorbed to be captivated, to be occupied. Nothing should occupy you. Nothing should absorb your attention. Nothing should captivate you 
accept uh, the work ahead of you. So we must accelerate. So that First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, verses twenty nine to thirty one are very instructive. Very instructive. Even verse thirty two. I would like you to be free from concern. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord. That should be your concern too. Whether you are married or not married, your concern should be the Lord's affairs and how you can please the Lord. So if you are married, <clears throat> teach your wife that your primary concern uh, is not each other. Your primary concern is how to please the Lord. That's very, very important. Then another verse that God uh, uh, gave to me uh, to share with you about this matter of acceleration is found in Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2. I'll, the verse is verse 3, and I'll read it in many versions. But I'll start from verse 1. Verse 1 says, Then we turned back and set out towards the desert along the route to the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time, we made our way around the hill. We made our way around the hill country of Sire. Then the Lord said to me, you have made your way around this hill long enough. Now turn north. Now, if we read this verse in many versions in NLT, um, let's go to King James Version first. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. But if you read it, in the Good News Bible, that we have spent enough time wandering about in those hills, and that we should go north. But there's a version that says, move on. Uh, is it NLT? You have been wandering around this hill country long enough, turn northward. There's a version that says, move on. You have been. Um, Move on, move on. So what God is saying is that there should be no mountain that should detain us. And a mountain that could detain us could refer to things we enjoy the most. Um, it could be a ministry that we like. It could be whatever it is that uh, keeps your your spirit engrossed, engrossed in it. Then it's a mountain. Then you should move on. Don't go around the mountain. Go around and around the mountain. It's time for you to move on. Now the direction is going to be pointed by God. He will say, go to the north, go to the south, go to the west. What God is saying is that we must break up camp and move on. I don't know that it is the amplified version that says so. It says, you have roamed around this mountain country long enough, turn northward. Another version says, break up camp. You must break up camp. You have been moving around this mountain for too long. So the instruction number four, is that nothing should delay you, nothing should detain you, nothing should absorb your attention, nothing should captivate your interest. Your interest is discipleship making, your interest is to advance the kingdom of God and focus on that. Don't allow anything to slow you down. Uh, keep on moving, keep on moving, because the time is short. 
That was instruction number four. Uh, so God has given us four instructions now. There are three left. Number one, God is giving us an obligation to accelerate. Acceleration is an obligation. It's not optional. It's obligatory. Number two, we make discipleship the core of our acceleration. Number three, we must be cognizant of the fact that the time is short. And therefore, if we are to accelerate, the time is now. And then number five, don't allow any, number four, don't allow anything to detain you. Move on, keep on moving on. Make progress in acceleration. Don't uh, uh, go around in circles. Uh, make progress in acceleration. And then the Lord will help you. Then we'll give you the remaining three uh, instructions that God gave us at the end of our JGCN. I'm trusting that I'm not wasting my time in reminding you of what God said. I'm being obedient to what God said I should do. I was instructed uh, by the leadership of JGCN Africa uh, to go briefly over the seven mandates. I'm trusting that you are listening to them. You allow the spirit of God to speak to you and to instruct you. The Lord bless you. Have a blessed 2023. Thank you.